Welcome back. Episode 4 of Disco. So, we got a bit distracted over here. We'll go around here. Sort of skipping stuff. I'm not going to skip containers. I might have money. Trash I'll talk to you later, mate. There's all these different clues and stuff. You can't do everything at once. Oh, I need to bottle a bag. This trash container is locked. The slide with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open, open with the key. It should now be possible. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. Of course you should. This is your time to shine, Hobo Cop. Dive into that dumpster for extra content. Of course you're going in there. Open the open. smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Perfect. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Herbic up star. Wow. An armistice caliber 50 knock cannon. Half wrapped in paper tissues. So shiny. Never mind. Well, I can't Look at that it. fat string of archipelagon pearls snaking amidst the banana peels. And is that Cordon Electric's preamp with Electra F2 tubes? It is. That catch is quite a price. We're talking 12,000. Easy. Unless you're into hi-fi yourself. I'm That's into hi-fi. too bad, because none of those things are actually in there. Oh, wow. There's just food waste and crisp wrappings. Must be something. All you see is a broken mug with a racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. <gasps> Take the mug. Mm-hmm. Look under the boxes. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. I'm wearing gloves. It's fine. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Noodles, yeah, okay. Let's check the rag. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Pants. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Mm, let's throw up again. The victim's clothes? <laughs> Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Strange. Drop them in here, officer. He's got a plastic... I need a plastic bag, he's just got them. Guitar mark, blue jeans. Pockets, empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks in the container. The is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Give me the bag. Something slimy catches your eye. Yep, I'm going for it. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Nice. Bag the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib-knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? Let's have a the look. rest of the bag is just kitchen variety waste. Just garbage. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. 
Yeah, we're gonna ask the kids. The fuck's he on about? Kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. What the See? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Alright, Jackie. The lieutenant nods. Oh, then, food waste. Look, it's we just go. organic waste. Cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, what's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something, yes, something what is it? large. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out Damage forms and ledger. notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? Um, I don't know what it this is. is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Um... I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so I threw it away. Well, <laughs> lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains, just to be sure some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Mm, I'll do it to try to listen to you. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Um. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Give me a ladder and cut this guy down. Do I really want to talk to Kuno again right now? in a new and exciting book mm. it's a bookstore what type sir. Of store is this? we sell books postcards and some board games it's called crime romance and biographies of famous people <laughs> books postcards easy even a kid would know all of this yeah I'm not gonna lecture her don't be a fool as an expert it's your duty to tell what you know to everyone. Man, I, Sir, I are you one. okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Okay, okay I'll ask you questions. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is this crime, crime business? It's about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch ah, the criminals. Yeah, that crime murder gets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a you policeman. don't look much like a policeman. Mm. What's the cop look like then? Sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Ah, Dick Mullen. That's what those guys are calling me. Well, I'll never be as good don't as Mullen. Don't say that. He's not even real. You're real. Uh, I really want to do this. You can much. talk about something else if you want. I've got no money, I don't want to go to the store.
This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Good. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And Saint G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. Uh, mail collection box, you should man the, the fuck mailbox up. mailbox does not know how to man up. It is an inanimate object. I'm not gonna kick it. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Not too bad, though. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Fine, Tatsuragi. Every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? A pig sandwich. He's got a sandwich. I want a you sandwich. You're breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball. Okay. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Ball time! That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're Got the ball. way Show past their time. Time. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. Feel the, the cold ball. metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it, probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man, the man ball, ball is, is ready. ready. Take in the surroundings. The chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind. Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. One little class, glancing with... An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Be the bullet. Mel! Smashed it! the merde! Why is he angry? A whorehouse of shit. Woohoo! It wasn't whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24, and then some. Nothing yeah, to be embarrassed about. What the hell is your problem? What? Rene, calm. Not weak, right? Triceps. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. What are you talking about? What? I don't understand why you're angry. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. Ah, I thought it was shot put. Well, it damn well isn't. It's Petonk. You ruined a Petonk game. We want our bull back. Ooh. I think it's in the water there. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. <laughs> she, man. I, I, I thought you found a shot put. Of course there's harm done, you orange slug. 
You always a goddamn bull. Alright, I'm gonna try to fix this. Good. Mistakes are forgiven when men at least try to right their wrongs. Yeah, well, I, I didn't... believe you will try. I'm just trying to join now, the game. I'm trying to ruin us? it. Yes. Why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Rhetoric, shut up. You never know. He might know something. Yes, logic. This is a good vantage point. Yes. Uh, I'll ask straight about the hangman. Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. This is the guy with the sandwich here, yeah. Uh, I'm talking to Rene. Uh, most Kim of the locals. The union is the law. So can you really blame them? So you don't have a problem with the term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. Hmm, what about police? I am confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork <laughs> and other administrative duties. Station tidy. Um, there are no duties ICM women sh couldn't carry but out. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? And I don't think any evolutionary inequality at play here. Really, officer. <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. Fair enough. You seem to be playing yes. in the crater. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know I how do. I got here? Fire from heavy artillery. Okay, it's a crater left by Why artillery what? fire. What? Because Why? that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership. And turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Um. Wait, who are the communists again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists. Call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. So, did you use that so far? No. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Oh, he's still, yeah, he's still got like five Should force. have fought dirty like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. Okay. We didn't so. And we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the Suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Probably, logic. Um, I understand. I'd bomb this, this place, place too. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They didn't do it because they didn't like it. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Ah, like D-Day. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. I shake my head and look down. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. <laughs> blood ground. You got old Rene going there. Like he isn't hangry enough already. Well, that explains Damn all right, the war son. damage. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... 
What do you think? I don't know what to think. Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Fuck. Um. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. So Kate and Shane. Coalition seems quite capable. Commies just don't understand how money works. No, they don't. But I'm sorry it had to be the coalition. After eight years of fighting rabbit commies, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Frisell had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. <sighs> this is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. I'm not, I can't... I can't suzerain is the king! Way. Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. I'll go for it. As Rene turns from success to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted. This too, How many medals are there? The larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. Look at the cross. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. It's the Croix de Bravour, Cross of Valor. The cross was the highest battlefield decoration in Suzerain's armed forces, awarded for exceptional bravery in the line of duty, in service of King Frissel the First. Nice work. Look at a the sun. small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written. The setting sun was a decoration used to distinguish seasoned combat veterans in service of King Frizzle the First during the revolution. Oh uh, yeah, how'd you get for that? bravery? Uh, <laughs> we're not for killing babies. Or? No, we were the last ones to keep all the baby killers and rapists in check. And let me tell you, son, if there hadn't been royal carabineers, Revelshul might not be standing at all. Whoa, sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. This man will literally talk your ear off if you let him wander off to memory lane. Sounds like a story, yeah. I'll tell you didn't think you had the stomach for it. Kids dance these days. I'm used to that. Well, I know. For doing I my know. duty in the heat of battle, for looking my mortality in the eye, when men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shed themselves. Well, I haven't talked to Gaston yet. He really. saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front though. line in his gown of velvet and gold. Save the princeling. It was only the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar, wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. Even his rifle was gold-plated, shone from five clicks away. Can you imagine the acid? He really despises that Drisson fellow. Sure. Purple velvet tunic. Mm. That isn't exactly camo. To keep it's the long and short, Drisson marched us against the partisans in Koron. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. Richard I got Jan shot in the left shoulder indeed. and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Then his horse. 
driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Shit. Then everything went black. This guy's hardcore. Rene. Captain Arnoux, le fléau des chevaux. The bane of horses. The bane of horses. Le fléau des chevaux. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joe Lestresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. I'd give up. I can't imagine he didn't. that much at I hoisted the prick on my back and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jealous freak convinced Rissel to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood. Peace and shit. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty. Just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the son for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self worth. I want to know now. The old carabineer stands quietly like a statue, his features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Brison. Two days, Two days later, later. That and that even while crawling with mangled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. What is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself, it's there. Uh, quite impressive. It's men like Rene, who made Revachal great ones. Maybe, maybe, but also be in mine, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Oh no, you have to get shot. Repeatedly. And you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Well, I don't know, Rene is speak the man. Of what you know nothing about, Poltrun. Duty is something you will never understand. Oh, because he was why a you despise him dandy. so much? Had no business leading men or even being on the battlefield. All he was was related. That's it. Royal blood alone doesn't make army commanders. He was a stupid kid, only interested in horses, hairstyles, and man loving. <laughs> man loving. 782 royal carabineers are dead because of his incompetence. That's so cool. Whoa, man loving. Man loving, is that yeah. Even a word? It is now. Yeah. It is not. Thanks for the story, ah, Renee. There were many such stories in those days. Many such men, too. Oh, yes, Renee, yes. Sorry. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Lord, please bring those days back, if you can. I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Impress this old soldier. No, I don't have that happen. Thanks for your time, mate. I'm ask this guy for a sandwich. I have really outdone myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene. Tisk, tisk. It's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Um, can I have a bloody sandwich? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Nothing personal. It's just a principle. Fuck. The only one you have. The sandwich looks like a culinary wonder. 
well made and abundant in components. Oh, man. The author sure knew their craft. Oh, man. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one, you notice a brim of a tomato peeking from below. And is that mayonnaise? Oh man, Maybe please, can I have a bite? I wish I could help you, but I need this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. In my age, you need to pay attention to these things. You don't hear me, man. I need First the sandwich. Off, it's mine. A glimmer of respect flashes in Rene's eyes. Sorry, officer. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it in a bad way. But the sandwich is mine. I'm not gonna share it. I don't think he's gonna give me and a sandwich. When the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides. But try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets claws? We are a special kind of vermin, Gaston. Go on, this is not gonna work, but I gotta try. Give me a bite of that sandwich. A man so principled about his sandwich calls for a principled approach. Time to get political. I'm already tripping needy for really politics, do. baby. Now, unleash the fury. Your blood sandwich is a tool of the oppressors designed to keep the proletariat docile. What? What oppressors? Kitsuragi, shush. I am not going to listen to this cubby gunnery. Huh? Look, comrade. The overabundance the sandwich embodies is inherently evil. I really don't understand how my sandwich could... I don't get it either, but would you rather eat a sandwich? Wouldn't you rather eat a sandwich free of the bourgeois guilt package? I would rather just have this one, officer. It's really good. Mike, gosh, give me that fucking sandwich. Tell this lost comrade what the people's sandwich would be like. Distill the essence of the working man in a sandwich. Absolutely. I imagine a sandwich, absolutely minimal design, sleek, efficient, simple. The skepticism emanating from the merry senior could be sensed. He's not imagining it. Uh, I turn upside down, black bread like a symbol on top to salute the coal mines. Our heroes no, worked. Everything would fall off. Look, officer, I'm not a miner. I like different tasty food. Fine dining, not coal. Please, just drop it. Uh, look at me, sir. Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. You know no, officers, I'm sorry, and I really would- Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. Yes, sir, I think. He means caviar socialists. I wish I could, but I just <laughs> don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and risks- Odd. He doesn't seem to be lying. There's something off here. Sounds like you're holding it back. Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the union. I just know Evrat. A union oh, member? In many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. Evrard, Edgar, and the older debarders all know me. So you're not actual Not member. in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Evrard keeps me on the payroll, just for the little things. So that's what it was before, him hiding something. He tries to make it look like he's a big deal in the Union. And now the illusion is disintegrating before your and Rene's eyes. He doesn't know anything because no one tells him anything. He's an outsider. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate this socialist rabble. But even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence. Never committing to anything. 
pick a damn side already. What are the little things you do for effort? Writing work mostly. Occasionally, he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. And what kind of things? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez, and how things are, and how they could be. Everhart and I have this long talk where... Where? Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's all for now. No, thank you. Magnesium based life form. We tell them, hell no. Ooh. You're about to become a magnesium based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on slow working background radiation to take us further into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution and magnesium is the key. You are the first of your species, the next step in human evolution. An advanced magnesium proton man who mags it up, drinks it down and sniffs it sideways. Magnesium based life form. Magnesium receptacle plant plus two evolution. And lost the logic. So I got three thoughts. So I can forget the thoughts. Because look, there's only so many you can have. And there's a big list of thoughts. Chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. That'd be better than interfacing, maybe. If we're not doing autopsy anyway. A pawn shop, eh? See what it's about. Antique cash register. Film projector wearing away. Oh, it's doing that. A bust of a woman. Wow, a very large red t shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other car. Oh, yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding toward you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyondal burning. The antlers on the hood of the man's cloak and his piercing blue eyes are familiar. Smells like worn cotton Sniff the and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. How much you sell it for? Real. That's oh, dirt shit. cheap. You just give it to me but free. Why? I'm broke crap. I sympathize, I do. But this is a for profit enterprise. Two How much real. you sell it for? That's dirt cheap. Just give it to me free. Why? We'll I pay you in some other way. Not services. It's the man deal from with the man? Walking away from his burning village. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure who huh? it is. 
tell me about I need help remembering basic facts oh, of reality. I see. That's tough, man. I feel the same way sometimes. The man from Hjelmdal is the hero of a series of popular books based on a fictional version of Kotla. In fact, most people don't think that man from Hjelmdal ever really existed. But they are wrong. Hjelmdal isn't a real place. Neither is the man a real man, of course. But both the man and Hjelmdal are an ontological necessity. But hey, it's not worth getting into an argument about. Wow. What? Um... Yes, yeah. so I need money. No response. He's having trouble processing it. Believe it. Have you tried concentrating um, on sorry, something I'm other than your personal Draghi affairs? That I don't remember shit. Yes. Um, I think it was because I was drinking. Um. um what should I try work? On? The case at hand. It can work miracles. Maybe really? Not. You look fine to me. This psychodrama is and Clearly, he prefers to think you're malingering. He cannot fathom that anyone could drink so much. Focus on other people's troubles. No. A moment yeah, no, passes. Uh, the lieutenant. I just want money. Okay, he's only giving money. Is he? Dude, I don't it's have any not money. often that I see officers from. What can I do for you? Um, have you had any trouble? Ever? I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Uh, whatever. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Um, honestly, I think some of your selections are more tasteful It keeps me entertained. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes, bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Let's do it. Is Roy higher than yes? What is he on? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. He's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Parolidon. A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and it makes your eyes turn yellow. Uh, sir, could you take off your sunglasses? Why Let's on check earth? Your eyes. These are prescription. I can't really see without them. No judgment. Just, just, uh, curious. I probably did loads of Pyrrolidon before I lost my memory. I've had to take it. You know, since the people's pile cleanup. I was with the emergency relief brigade. He's taken for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. Uh, must be There's tough. a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened, and why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment, an early death, cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it, General? No one's. It, a bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you... I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not... Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Yeah, there's something I'd like Let to Let me have a look. Um, check Anything pockets. else you're thinking of selling? Uh, 
Well. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. Another time, perhaps. Uh, do you ever have any guns, like the ones carried by officers of the citizens? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. What the fuck? This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh, God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Uh, was the bio she policeman? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive. Oh, well, I'm but I was again. just happy to get rid of it and of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. I'm looking for a scary lady that has my right, gun. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Mm. Maybe she wants to prove she can do her jobs better it's than we can. It's possible in these parts of town. We ought to find her and discourage her from taking justice into her own hands. Uh, uh, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. Alright, where can I My find apologies, it? apologies, officer. But I have no uh, idea where she... A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Of course. Will you show your drugs you to me? You said you'd done it before, yeah? Yeah. The lieutenant steps away, pretending to admire some of the knickknacks on display. Looks like he won't be your knock, but he won't be thrilled about this either. I read the pirate every day. Every day. You look the part. Here you go, man. Yes, darling. That's the coalition government ordained Parolidon. Straight into your gut. Thank you, man. I have to leave now. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. It's quite a lot. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Um, an easy example of what? No, I'm going to use it as denouncing it. No. It's just a funny mark. I can't even laugh anymore. You're that kind of detective. I don't want to look at my ledger right now. I want to take drugs. Whoa. In your hand. Parolidon. The double rainbow of synthetic hallucinogens, rare and gritty, a product of the age of atomic power. Look at the little puck. What a bit. funny little cat. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to boredom. Mm, open the cap. The container is warm to the touch. Or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. A little slit on the side lets you just slurp it up. Like an oyster. Come on, slurp it. Slurp it aggressively. Psychorized. <laughs> you suck a manly dose of the extremely chemical smelling liquid into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. 
When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. Tastes like an anti radiation like drug. Many things all melting into one conflagration in the back of your throat. As you look around, the world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges as though it were a photo burning. Really? No. Of course not really. It's just a metaphor. The effect of that otherworldly drop of liquid is slower, more subtle than that of real flames, yet just as warm. This warmth, it makes you want to share your discovery with Kim. Hey Kim, I just did a drop of that anti-radiation drug. It's I'm great. happy for you. His glasses turn golden as the fire reflects off the lenses. You feel this man is your brother. Yeah, brother Kim gets it right. Just don't mix it with anything, he thinks, looking you over. Thankfully, his sense of balance seems okay. Whatever. I'm not getting involved. Wow. Kim's badass. Or he's had a druggy partner. Whoa. That's probably it. He's, he's seen, seen it, before. it before. Look at all these guys go off like fireworks as information pours into you about the lieutenant's simple remark. I'm happy for you. This stuff is great. Probably Why stand not? Straight? This government developed substance seems very non-intrusive. You could yeah. even operate heavy machinery. Fire, fire machinery. machinery. Please don't actually operate any fire machines. I'm gonna if I can find a fire machines. Already you can tell you're going to be sloping a lot more parolidon. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human beings. Brilliant. So, well, I've got to, I've got to level up. So, all of these things quite good. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna get electrical chemistry for the drugs. 